are now watching the Vision Channel, where Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain, so they that see it can take it and run with it. This is the channel where faith and vision collide to bring forth a manifestation. You're watching the Vision Channel. to the ground and die alone it won't yield any harvest and God desires to use you not to give you a harvest but for you to become the harvest let me tell you the difference in the kingdom people want a harvest but in the kingdom you become the harvest that people need yes I know when you give men will give good measure press down shaking together and many of us we have been taught that yeah we, we want to be the one that we're receiving that's what church teaches. Good men pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto you. But I want to be one of the men that gave. Yeah. And what God is trying to do with us, he's trying to teach us. There's a difference between being enlisted. Because most people want to enlist in God. You cannot enlist. You can enlist if you want. But see, when you're chosen, when you're chosen, you don't have to come enlisted. See, when you're chosen, you can't get out of your assignment. God won't let you out because you were never enlisted. You didn't come on your own. See, when you come on your own, you can leave on your own. When you're chosen, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you should go forth and bring forth more fruit, that your fruit shall remain. God is trying to tell you, if you're in this house today, that you're chosen. Amen. And it doesn't matter, Peter, if you denied me three times. Because I'll come back and ask you three times to cancel out every denial. I ask you, Peter, do you love me? Why was he asking Peter, do you love me? Because he only knew that the love that he had for Christ was getting ready to cancel out his sins. James says, he said, James says, don't you know that love cancels out a multitude of sins? So I, I want to kind of get into my topic today. And I'm not going to be before you long because God wanted me to talk about poverty, but he wanted me to talk about it in a different way. He wanted me to say something different today, so I want, I want y'all to kind of keep me today when he talks about poverty. I know what the Bible says about poverty, a little sleep, a little slumber, so to the hands of the fold, and so shall poverty come upon you in, in, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 10 and verse 11. That's exactly what it said. You know, and I, and I, I kind of want to not straight, I'd use that scripture today just to kind of give us a reference of background, but I don't want to use it. I just want to use it just so you can hear about what poverty is. Poverty talks about a little sleep, a little something. I kind of shared something with him. If you're 30 years old and you slept for eight years, if you slept eight hours a day, 30 years old right now, some of us are more than 30, so just think about it. You have slept eight hours a day. If you calculate eight hours into 10 years, if you calculate eight hours into 30 years, you have slept eight years of your life. Look how many years that you have wasted. Look how much time that you have lost. So the enemy uses sleep to bring us into places of poverty. Because the sleep, see, and let me tell you what sleep means. Sleep doesn't always just mean you laying down and resting. Sleep can also mean consciousness, awareness. So you cannot be aware, you may miss the awareness of time that God was trying to do something in a certain season, and you missed the season because you were asleep. You wasn't aware of what God was doing as Jacob laid down and he slept. And the Bible said that when Jacob woke up, he said the Lord was in this place and I knew it not. He didn't have the comprehension of the consciousness of what God was doing. And it took, watch this, it took almost 30 years. God had to come back to Jacob. It took 40 years. God had to come back to Jacob. He was waiting for his one opportunity, his one moment to come back to Jacob so that Jacob could have the awareness. So in the wrestling with Jacob, Jacob was aware that he had known it was God 
God waited till he was alone and Jacob was alone and Jacob was left alone and some of us our lives are so busy in our connections that God want to do something in your life because God is telling you going through the rat race of life he's trying to do something in your life he said that Jacob was left alone he had to leave his family he had to leave his friends he had to leave his servant he had to leave everything that he was familiar with to get something that he didn't understand sometimes you got to leave for me to experience future but the problem with us, familiar keep calling us. Familiar keep talking to us. Familiar keep communicating with us. Familiar keeps loving on us. And familiar is trying to keep you into failure, not future. The problem that we have, we can't cut off familiar. It's hard to cut off familiar. It took Abraham 13 years to cut off the familiar. Didn't I tell you not to bring Lot with you? Cut off the familiar. Leave your family, your kindred, and your father's house. Leave the familiar. I'm trying to introduce to you future. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And how Satan hangs on. He hangs on because that's mama. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And mama just such and such. I, I, but I thought the Bible said that when you get married, leave and cleave. Come on, sir, you say it. So why is mama still trying to cleave on to something that God wants you to release? <laughs> leave and cleave. So listen, so you come into a place of poverty because you're outside of the boundaries of God and now everything in your house is out of order because mama's running your house, not God in your house. You didn't put mama in the seat of God and God is trying to tell you that your entire house is out of order. Watch this. So if something is out of order, when you go to a vending machine, who invests in money inside of a vending machine? You know if it's say out of order, you won't put nothing in it because you ain't getting nothing out of it. So if your house is out of order, if mom is running your house, God can't put nothing in because he knows he ain't going to get nothing out and your house will go in poverty. Listen to me. Mama had their time. Mm -hmm. Daddy them had their time. And it's not that they can't give you wisdom, but you cannot use their wisdom as God's direction. And that's the problem that we have because mama them and daddy them have become their God and they don't have direction because the direction is coming from the God that they put on the throne of their life and all of a sudden their life is down spiraling and poverty comes because everything is out of order. You don't understand. Your mama ain't the head anymore. Your daddy ain't the head. God has made you the head and not the tail. You need to follow the head. The reason that Adam and Eve got into the situation they was in because it came to Eve, it was fed Adam. It was supposed to be the other way. Adam was the one who was the tiller. Come on, sir. Adam was the one who was called the till. Come on. And here it is. Knowing that it was forbidden. Watch this. Knowing that it was forbidden. Seeing how the enemy has been getting us. He's been giving us stuff that look good, that's forbidden. Uh -huh. So when you look at it, you got donuts, glaze. You got cinnamon rolls, chocolate, with caramel and nuts on it. You got apple fritters. You got cinnamon twists. You got cinnamon rolls. You got donuts from caramel to strawberry, to chocolate. So you got everything, and the enemy keep trying to tip you and telling you that it ain't forbidden. It's only a donut. Oh, my God. It doesn't matter what color, what flavor, all a donut is forbidden. And the enemy keep providing, keep showing you stuff that is unforbidden. It's the same name, but it's coming a different way. So because we like the sweets, we like the sweets because it got glaze on it. Listen, we substitute a meal for the sweets. We're good for substitution. So we keep substituting. I got to have me one of them, them chocolate donuts. You understand, this is my sweet tooth. And God is saying, 
you're substituting the meal. So when it comes down for you to have strength, you won't have strength because all you got is an emotional high. This is your sweets. And you wonder why you don't have the stamina you need. It was good when it went down, but you don't have much left because real meat, real substance, if you eat any kind of steak, it stays in your system for three days before it digests. See, the stuff that God gives you, it's going to take a while to digest, but it's going to build your body. It's going to build you. It's going to strengthen you. Your body will be able to take the nutrients. Now watch this. So even when the body is full and the body itself start taking the nutrients, the body will release what ain't worth nothing. And the problem with us, you keep holding on to something that ain't worth nothing no more. And you're covered in the poverty. Okay. All right. I know ain't nobody going to, ain't nobody paying attention to nothing I'm saying now because they're looking at the donuts. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> like a puzzle, yeah, you bought all them donuts. What you going to do with them donuts? <laughs> they already processing in their mind about the donuts. Which one they want? <laughs> How they going to eat it? Making sure nobody else get it. Amen. Bogart be the first. <laughs> Ain't no altar call. It's just donuts on the altar. <laughs> you don't need prayer. You just want a donut. <laughs> Pastor, I just, I just need a, uh, no, you want a donut. Go ahead and take one of the, the ones with the caramel on it. Go ahead, I know. I know you got a sweet tooth. But the issue when it comes to poverty, and I'm going to approach poverty in a different way. I'm going to approach it. <clears throat> just as I presented these donuts and have the donuts out, and you can eat all of them. There's no consequences you didn't pay for it. But there's a consequences that you would have to pay even though you didn't pay for it. Let me tell you how poverty, the poverty that God is in reference to, sometimes we only associate poverty with money. And it is a form of poverty, but it's not poverty in its entirety. So let me explain to you some of the forms of poverty that God was expressing and how he's expressing to me. Let me show you how you can come into poverty this way. The Bible said when it came down, when God created the first man, he told him that I need you to be fruitful, multiply and replenish and subdue. And John, in John and Genesis chapter one and verse 26, he gives man authority over the cattle, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. He gave them cattle over everything. So my, my question today, that when it comes to poverty, how is it that God God gave us power, he gave us authority over the cattle, over the fish, over the fowls of the air. He gave us, he gave us power and authority over it. So just as we can eat these donuts, so how is it that we're dying of colon cancer? How is it we're dying, we're dying of high blood pressure? I thought he gave you power, authority, dominion over the fish of the sea, but because you ate so much beef, it gave you colon cancer. But because you ate so much sweets, now you got diabetes. Now you didn't brought your body into poverty. You are praying that God heal you, but you still eating chitlins. You still eating hormones, and the doctors have warned you. The doctors have concern for you, but you're still your high blood pressure. Listen, and some people's blood pressure is out of the roof, but you still have not had the, the discipline to be able to stop doing what you're doing. And now you brought your kidneys are shutting down, your livers are shutting down. And here's the problem: the problem is we see people that are preaching and teaching in the body of Christ that are obese, that are dying. They ain't dying from attacks. They're dying for eating because they ain't disciplined and now your body has come into poverty. So let me say this. So if you allow, let me, I, I said that from a natural standpoint, but now let me get spiritual with the same thing that I said. Because if you started eating sporadically, 
you're just eating and eating and eating and ain't watching what you're eating, you're allowing Satan to come in this body. You see, sicknesses didn't come until somebody fell. God told Adam, the day that you eat of the fruit is the day that you'll die. Your body will start deteriorating from the dust you came and the dust you shall return. So the first thing that was affected was his body. See, we think that for some reason, the day that you'll die, how in the world could you die? Death wasn't even a, death wasn't even around then. Death came as an accusation because Adam allowed death to come in first. When he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was death. And even though it looked appetizing, even though it looked good, even though it looked scrumptious, but he ate death and he became what he ate. We are, we've heard the slogan, what we eat. My question to you, what have you eaten? Why do we keep having headaches and migraines? Why do we have insulin issues in the body of Christ and God haven't healed you? We've brought this body into part. Watch this. Just hear me. You see, when you go to the book of Corinthians, in Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible says your body is not your own. For you were bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So if you have to glorify God in your body and in your spirit, then definitely be there where glory is. <laughs> so because we have allowed all of these things to cover, to cloud the glory of God in our life, and then we have taken our life and put it in our own hands just by what we open our mouth and eat. See, the thing that I learned about Adam, he had to eat it. Watch this. And when, okay, let me say this. I'm still talking about poverty, but some of us, had you never tasted the alcohol, you would have never got addicted. So you had to put it in your mouth. Watch this. And because you put it in your mouth, your taste budded. Watch this. So his taste buddy, when Adam ate the sin, he ate the fruit. He ate death. Once he ate it, his taste buddies for sin. So had you never tried it, you would have never had a desire for it, a temptation. So watch, when temptation comes, temptation don't have to be around you. Watch this. Once you had it one time, see, most people, when they get hooked on addictions and drugs, how they die, you see people shrivel up on crack cocaine and all that. You see people are now with cigarette weed and all the other stuff that they say. Cigarette weed. Cigarettes mixed with weed. Cigarette weed, yeah, it's cigarette weed. And they say, well, it came from Mother Earth, but Mother Earth can kill you if you misappropriate it. You don't have glaucoma. So you telling me about your prescription. <laughs> so you take these supplements and you put it in this body. And, and the problem with what you put in your body, God holds you accountable. See, it gives you the thing that you can now, the enemy can come in, death can come in because how you mistreated this body. And so we get around hospital rooms and hospital beds. You've ate pork chops all your life. Had pork chops for breakfast, pork chops for lunch, pork chops for dinner, pork chops for snacks. Even some of you might even have a pork chop in your pocket now. <laughs> and thinking this is not going to affect the temple for your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost so how are you allowing demonic entities to come into your body for the misappropriated the misappropriation of what you're eating what you're drinking and thinking that's not going to have an effect that will change the very trajectory of your organs and your body and some people are dying before time because what they put in their mouth 
You was never supposed to smoke that weed. Somebody gave it to you. Most addiction starts with somebody give. Somebody offer it to you. Let me offer it. It's free. Let me offer it to you. So let me tell you how temptation works. It's for free. Because you are tempted when you get it. Once you get it, you're tempted. Just as I came here. See, let me tell you something. See, the devil will only give you the sweets of things. It's temptation. God tests you. He don't tempt you. So when you start seeing sweet stuff that look like it's for free, that you can sleep with somebody for free, ain't nobody watching, ain't nobody doing this, you can steal this for free, it's the enemy trying to give you the sweets to make you think that you won't get caught, but not understand it. Whatever you do in secret, it will be rewarded to you openly. It will be proclaimed among housetops. And this is how the enemy deceives us. And this is how our bodies, this is how our life, it deteriorates down to a state of poverty. Hear me. So how the enemy gets the believers, I'm coming, I promise I'm coming. I'm still talking about Adam. Just give me a second. I'm still talking about poverty and how this thing works. So now, because Satan had it in mind that you would come into a state of poverty. So I'll attempt you to tempt you. I'm going to make an attempt. I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to bring you the drugs. I'm going to bring you the wine. I'm going to bring you this money. I'm going to tempt you because I'm trying to take you. Hmm. Temptation always comes to a place of taking. Once you take it, once you take the hit, once you take the sip, once you take the dip, whatever it is, hip, sip, or dip, whatever, whatever you take, I want you to see this, because it's brought to you. Temptation is brought to you. So when temptation is brought to you, once you take the sip, the dip, or the hit, Watch this. It's no longer temptation. It can no longer, listen, it's no longer coming to you. You're now going to it. And so how the enemy deceives us when it comes to poverty, you thought because you took that hit of that cigar weed, it wasn't going to bring you into a state of poverty. So listen to me. So now every time you get paid, Instead of paying your bills, then you go and get something that you want to hit because you've been tempted. Not understanding that the enemy just used this to bring you into a state of poverty. So your lights are cut off. And you don't care if your lights off. You don't care if you don't have no food in your refrigerator. See, this is how people are addicted to crack, but not knowing that the enemy only used this tactic to bring you into temptation. Why? He wanted to tempt you so that he can destroy you. You will compromise your relationship with Christ. And so you'll start stealing. Come on, come on. And watch this. When, when temptation, the spirit takes you over, it doesn't matter about love anymore. See, there's no honor, there's no respect, because you'll start bringing other people into poverty. Come on. Watch how strong poverty is. Watch how strong when he tempts you. All of a sudden, the temptation overtakes you. So you have to meet the you have to meet the need now. So you have to get a drink. You have to get your crack. You, you have to get your high. Your angel does. You have to get it. You have to get your embalming fluid. You have to get your wit. You have to get some. So watch this. Because temptation, because you're broke, is brought you into a state of poverty. You'll start bringing everybody you love into a state of poverty. Because I know mama got rings in her closet. I know my daddy got some money stashed under his pillows. You'll start stealing and taking from them. All to bring them into a state of poverty. All to fulfill your habit. And that's what Satan desired. Come on. That's it. And now you got lung cancer because of your smoke. And the enemy was trying to bring your body into a state of poverty. And oftentimes we don't know it. And us preachers, we talking, yes. I'm just telling you now, we, the Lord said we can drink wine. <laughs> I'm going to drink wine. And the Bible said, drink wine for thy stomach's sake. But, but watch it. Now, here's the problem. But here's the problem. You don't know that drinking wine oftentimes to cirrhosis of the liver. Not realizing that before you got saved, you was an alcoholic. So now you're opening the door so that the enemy can tear down your liver, tear down your lungs, and tear down this temple that God has because you were not taught that the enemy is trying to bring your body into ruins. Come on, sir. That's it. And watch this. 
I, I really don't know if we truly understand this whole principle about God. What God told us from the beginning. See, the earth should never be in the condition that it's in if we understand God's original intent. We shouldn't have to wait on presidents of Congress, some kind of legislation. We shouldn't have to wait on Republicans, Democrats, in order for them to get together. That wasn't the mandate from the beginning. That wasn't the mandate. The mandate, the mandate was God made a man to do it all. But you're waiting on the man and you haven't become the man that God intended. So that's why the earth is going into ruins. That's why the earth is going into poverty. Watch this. So when God made the first man, the first assignment that he gave man, God gave a demonstration before he made him. It said, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God starts speaking. So everything that was not supposed to be poverty without form and void it was poverty the earth was stricken with poverty and God said how I am it cannot be so he had a demonstration first let me create the earth let me call light separate light away from darkness let me make sure I put everything in place before I made man he made sure that Adam had a place to go before he ever created him because he wanted Adam to keep up what he's done so watch this Adam let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air. He said, but let them be fruitful and multiply and replenish and subdue and have dominion. Let them, wait a minute, multiply. What do you mean? Take dominion and authority, subdue. What is all this stuff about? What would I have to replenish? Because anything that has been utilized, we have the power to replenish it. And the problem with the body of Christ, we're waiting for everybody else to do what God told us to do. There shouldn't be no reason that if God gave us power, the problem with Adam in disobeying God, he didn't lose his potential to sow, he lost his power. So when he sold, it said, the land, thorns and thistles are going to grow. And now you have to work by the sweat of your brow. So it doesn't matter how much you labor. The land will respond improperly. The land now understands. Now, let me, let me tell you something. God made sure that he created Adam from the land. So the Ad land and Adam had a relationship because they came from the same place. So Adam understood a seed because God told him every seed will produce after its own kind. So Adam understood the seed. He understood the soil because he came from the soil and he understood the season. That any time I plant the seed. So when it comes to the body of Christ, how God is trying to get us not to fall into the traps of poverty, we should understand the same thing that he gave Adam. You should understand the same concept because you are part of the dirt. From the dust you came and from the dust you shall return. So you should understand seed. Seed is not always just farmers going out and plant seed. But God said the seed is the word of God. So what he spoke in the beginning was the first seed. So most of us, because we don't have discerning of times, knowing our purpose, we're falling by the wayside, and the earth is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, and the earth is going in ruins, waiting for us to be manifested from the original intent to where God gave that man that purpose and that power to be able to change it so everybody wouldn't suffer. So disobedience, because Adam disobeyed God, God said the land will no longer respond to you. I don't care what you do. If that curse is on you, then the land will not respond. So let me give it to you in a natural way to understand. The second, if that curse is there, because we don't think curses exist and we don't think spirits exist. So the curse was on Adam. Just hear me. So the curse was on Adam for the land. It was on Adam. So that curse of disobedience, 
when the land understood, and you can't say land don't understand. Okay. Let me explain to you how land understands. When Jesus wanted some figs from a fig tree, the Bible said he told the fig tree, no man will ever eat from you again since you disappointed me. He said, curse you. And the ground understood the command because the first word was a seed. And the tree withered up within 24 hours and the ground understood it and the tree and the roots dried up. So you can't say land don't understand. It may not understand you because the curse of poverty may be connected to you. And here's the thing. It's crazy because thorns and thistles shall grow. Just hear this. See, generational cannot just be just from your disobedience. That opens the door, but this curse that's called poverty can be generational. Okay. Genesis chapter 3, the serpent beguiled him, and God gave them power. And Adam lost his power. He lost his authority. He didn't lose his ability to sow. Because God told him, when you sow, thorns and thistles are going to grow. He didn't use his ability. He lost his authority. He lost his power. So let me bring it to you. So when you disobey God, all of a sudden you get the promotion. You get the raise. And the car break down. All of a sudden, somebody gets sick because the curse is on you. So your money, instead of it going up, is going down. The Bible called that. It's like holes in your pocket. And some people don't know that the curse of poverty is on their life, and they got holes in their pocket. It doesn't matter how much you bring in. But the more you bring in, it seems like the more it is going out, and you don't have enough month for your money. Because the curse of poverty is there, and no matter what you do, no matter what you get, something always happens to where it seems like your money has been depleted. You get your income tax check, and all of a sudden, the government like you weren't even expecting. Something happened to where your income tax money goes. See, it's natural things that we don't understand, spiritual things that we don't understand. But when you look at it from a natural perspective, you'll understand the natural perspective because there's a spiritual meaning behind that transaction, behind things transitioning. What curse, what door has been opened? What wrong? Here's the thing. He was a tiller. He tilled the land. So he was responsible for replenishing. He was responsible for producing. See, the mandate that God gave man originally has never changed. He just need to find a man. Some things can be brought or done because of your own intuition, your own will. But there are other things that can be generational. Genesis chapter 3, his father, Adam, fell. When you get to Cain, Genesis chapter 4. Cain took on the same responsibilities as his father, a tiller. A tiller who became a killer. Listen, he tried to sow blood. <laughs> Instead of him sowing seeds, he sowed his brother's blood. And the blood cried out because blood was never supposed to be in the place to sow. Just hear me. He makes the mistake, but he can't get past his father's demons past his mother mistakes so the door was open to failure so some people come into poverty and it's generational and we use the term in our neighborhood you're robbing Peter to pay Paul yep. but today I told you whatever curse of poverty on your life is going to be reversed He's going to cancel every curse of poverty. Everything from generational, everything that will try to cling to your life, he's going to take it out of your life because God is going to raise you up. He's lifting up a standard against every spirit of poverty that will try to attach you. I almost want to start praying. I cancel the spirit of desert spirits that will cause you to be in the drought. I cancel droughts. I cancel every desert spirit. I cancel every dry spirit. I cancel every power that will try to bring you down into a drought.
the Bible said that Paul said we went up by revelation. If you don't have revelation, you can't go up. And the same thing, he kills his brother Abel in the field, sows it, and God said, where is that brother? Am I my brother's keeper? Oh, you're lying. Why is your brother's blood crying out? Let me say this, please. When it comes to poverty, and God told Cain, he said, the land will not yield you its strength. The same curse that was on your father is now on you. He said, and a vagabond shall you be. Vagabond means a wanderer. And that's what people are doing because of the spirit of poverty, because of the mistakes and the doors they've allowed to open. They have got a vagabond anointed and they're wandering. Not understanding. They're wondering, but let me give you a mystery and a secret. Let me give you this since we're talking about thorns and thistles because he told them thorns and thistles are going to grow to you too. Your thorns and thistles are going to be the same thorns and thistles of your father. So this is one of the mysteries I'm going to show you today that God is getting ready to cancel your poverty because the same thorns and thistles that Adam had to deal with, the same thorns and thistles that Cain had to deal with, the Bible said when it came to Christ, they put thorns or crowns on his head. The crown, the thorns, the curse hit the blood. So it changed the curse that was on man so that poverty would no longer be there. When they put the crowns of thorns on his head, if blood represents life, so there can't be a curse where there's life. The Christ, listen, when Christ took the thorns, he was taking it away from us. He was blessing us. So he reversed the curse because Jesus was the second Adam, not the first. So he had to go back and remove everything that Adam had did by one man sin. Death entered into the world and death by sin because of one man. So if one man can open the door to sin, one man can open the door to eternity. Why do I know that? Because when he took the crown of thorns, they didn't realize that he was removing the curse of poverty. There are some people that God has assigned to deal with the spirit of poverty. He's assigned them. You were born to deal with it. There are some people, when you look in Genesis chapter 26, the Bible said there was a famine worse than the first famine. This is Isaac, Abraham's son now, and God is talking to him. And he want to go down into Egypt, and God told him, don't you dare run away from the famine. You don't know what's on your life. And many of us don't know that God has called you to kill famines. Okay, let me, let me say this. The first famine that he broke was on his own mother and father. Oh. His father could not produce with his mother for 25 years. So when he came, I told you, bodies can come into curses, famines. Poverty, because you can't produce children. You tried everything, and God is trying to tell I'm trying to tell somebody something today. God is trying to tell you that today, that just as it was with Abraham and Sarah, so shall it be with you. I'm breaking the curse that's off of you. It was Isaac the promised seed that broke the barrenness on his own mother and father. He broke the barrenness, so that was the first famine that he's breaking. I'm telling you this today, that God is breaking your barrenness, and he's breaking your famine. You won't have to go to Injurito. You won't have to do nothing with your eggs. You ain't got to do nothing with no sperm. All you need is the word of God. He's going to break that spirit, that spirit of barrenness and that poverty so you can have. And I'm going to tell you something. In this season, if you don't care, if you're not careful, you were thinking about one child just as Rebecca was and the Bible says Rebecca ended up having twins. You may, why, why would God give you twins? Because time was wasted from the one so he's got to give you two to catch you up with speed. He's going to give me double for my trouble. He's going to give you twins. Twins are always sign of covenants. Twins are always a sign of agreement. <laughs> wherever two can agree so God because he know that you're behind schedule that if I gave you this child you would ask for a child later so I have to give them to you right now because the spirit of poverty Lord God. Lord God. I'm not waiting and he said I'm not wasting any more time your children are coming My God. My God. why 
Watch this. Please hear this. Watch this. Because you can only get pregnant doing ovulation. <laughs> and what God is trying to teach you today, that many of us in here, it may not be that you want to carry a child, but you may have one you want to establish your business. And God said, because today in this atmosphere, while you're looking at me, while you're listening to me, it's ovulation season. <laughs> Ovulation season is where conception takes place. So what God is trying to do tonight is tonight today is give you the seed so you can conceive. I'm giving you the seed so that now you can conceive. When you think that you didn't have strength, the second watch this the conception take place, poverty leaves. Woo! So when you thought you couldn't get the money, the money will find you. Why? Because something was conceived. Watch this. How, how do I know that? Money will come. Uh, your your uh, um, influence will come. Your divine helpers will come. How will you know that they will come? Let me show you something. Don't you know? Watch how crazy this is. When a woman conceives and she get pregnant, watch this. She get pregnant. Don't you know when she get ready to have a baby shower, people just start giving gifts. They start spending their money. So when conception takes place, God has already people in place. And some of you are getting ready to come into spiritual baby showers. People are getting ready to bring to you, to give to you. I'm telling you, they're waiting on you. Conception. But today is a day of ovulation. That everything you prayed for, everything you've asked for, everything you have labored for, today because you're in this environment, today because the heavens are open, God is getting ready to do a new thing and probably is getting ready to leave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He told Sarah, is there anything too hard for God? Some of you are saying it's too hard because you've been barren for so long. And Sarah said this, shall I have any pleasure seeing that I'm old and Abraham is old? And God said at the time of life, at this time next year, at the time of life, I'm coming to visit that dead place. And here God, he specializes in resurrection. God said I'm getting ready to resurrect the thing that you think is dead. I'm getting ready to bring it back up. At the time of life, your time of life ain't coming next year. Your time of life is now. Yeah. Yeah. He tells Isaac the promise seed who broke the famine off of his mother. He said, all right, Isaac, I know you want to go because your father experienced the famine. That's why I said from the first famine, his father experienced the famine and he went into Egypt. But when his father went into Egypt, he got his wife took. He said, listen, stay right here in this land. If you stay in this land and don't go into Egypt, I'm going to be with you. Wait a minute. This land is not producing. Why do you want me to stay in a place that ain't producing? God say, because you don't know what I put on you. You don't know what's in you. I'm activating the real you. So what Adam lost, you picked up. I said there will be thorns and thistles, but that ain't benefiting. It will not be for you. He says, so in this land. And the land responded to the person who was anointed to carry the seed. So watch this. So God will bring you into a community. We call it the hood. It's all good in the hood where it don't look good. So God planted you in the hood because you're the person that's anointed to carry the seed. So you're the person that's supposed to change the community around. You're trying to get out to go to another community, and God said, no, I need you to stay to change this community. Because where you find poverty, demons rest. Let me explain it. Let me explain it. Where you find poverty, demons rest. Why would I say that? I prayed against desert spirits earlier. The Bible says when the spirit leaves a man, it goes into a dry place and finds rest. Well, where are dry places? Deserts. So when the enemy want to control an environment, he brings it down to a desert spirit. He brings it down to where men become desperate. 
desperation brings confrontations. It brings stagnation. It brings doubt. It brings fear. And the enemy runs. How do you think that community in our neighborhoods, our hoods that we call them, how do you think that everybody talks the same? You know what I'm talking about? See what I'm saying? See, let me tell you something. Poverty is not just you not having money. Poverty is a mindset. It's a spirit that consumes the confinements of a person's mind. It keeps you at a place to where even if I bring you out, I can take you to River Oaks and I can give you a million dollars, but you'll bring that entire mindset. You'll, you'll listen, you'll disregard protocols. You'll disregard, um, what, what do they call it, HOAs, home associations. It don't matter. You'll have loud parties in River Oaks because you'll bring that community to where you came from because of the spirits and the poverty that's on you. You'll do that to that community. You'll bring it down so you can bring poverty people into prosperous places and they'll tear that prosperous place down because the spirit of poverty is there. It doesn't matter what you give them. You can give them a bitly and they'll go and put um, elbows on it. You'll see them ride in a bitly with foreign bows. Not realizing the truth behind it we're laughing and we see it. Why do you want a bitly? Watch and you sit in the projects. You didn't bought you a four hundred thousand dollar car and parked it in the projects, not knowing that they got potholes in the parking lot. You didn't tow up the muffler that you can't pay for because you park your car in the park a lot of the projects. It is a impoverishment. It is a spirit. It is not natural behavior that every time you get, you have to spend. Why can't you save? It is the enemy reducing you that every time Satan tried to get the entire world, he would always use poverty. He would always use taking the control of the economy. If I take control of the economy, I can bring them down to my knees. I can get them to sacrifice. Because where did he meet Jesus at? He met Jesus in the wilderness where there's a drought, where it's dryness. And one of the things that he offered while there was drought, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you everything that's in the kingdom. And because how he gets men to convert, he gets them when they're in the drought. He gets them in the poverty states. Let me see if I can change the economy. Once I change the economy, I'll get them. And so many Christians, because they want to survive, because they really don't fully believe Jesus. Do you honestly, and I, I hate to say this, because some Christians are Judases. Okay. Okay. So let me explain Judas. Judas' name, where Judas came from, where Judas came from was a place that was connected to Judah. Judas came from a place that was connected to Judah. The name Judah means praise. So how Satan get people he brings their economy down while they're watch praising God to compromise. He watched the people that are praising God but don't believe him. Judas followed God. He heard from God. He did miracles. He did signs. He did wonders. Why do you think prophets sell their soul for a jelly roll? I got one here, jelly roll. <laughs> They sell out because they have a gift, but their gift haven't made room for them. So they make room for them in their money, in their pockets. So they sell this. So if I'll give you all this. I'll give you notoriety. I'll give you stages. I'll give you this. I'll give you cars. I'll give you money. I'll give you airplanes. All you need to do is just bow down and worship. And the gift, not understanding that your gift is supposed to make room, but your character kick you out of it. Satan offered it. 
and how Judas hid. He hid in Judah. He hid in praise. And I hate to say this, I'm, I'm going to say it, but Christians always say, I'm going to wait on God. God, so I'm going to give you this. And all of a sudden, every, they always got to wait. Man, the Lord told me, but that was 30 years ago. Have you did anything? Have you wrote the vision and have you made it plain? Because if you write the vision and make it plain, it's preparation. Wherever you find preparation, it is a sign of faith that God is now honored. He's pleased because you wrote down where he want to go. You wrote down what he said. So even when times don't look like it, you can go back and you can write down and you can remember what God said. He said, don't it tarry. Just wait for it. It's going to come. But it's in the waiting that we waste away because we don't know how to wait. We don't work while we wait, so we just wait. Watch this. When you go into a restaurant, if you're going to be a waiter, you have to wait on tables. But you're waiting as a waiter, but you're working. Watch this. And it's crazy that you're waiting, even though you're going to be paid a salary, but you still get tips while you're waiting. So what God is trying to teach the body of Christ, stop waiting on me without working. When you start waiting and working, I'll start giving you tips, clues of what I'm getting ready to do for you, telling you what season that you need to go through. Even though you're in me and you're employed by me, I still want to give you, stop wasting away because you refuse to work. And that's what brings poverty. I'm just waiting on the Lord. Oh, I'm just waiting. And then we start singing songs to validate us being lazy. I don't mind waiting. Mm. Hey. I don't mind waiting. Hey. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I'm like, okay, you don't mind waiting. But how long has God waited on you? Who do you think you're waiting on? You think you're waiting on the Alpha and the Omega? The Alpha and the Omega is waiting on you to be obedient and stop being lazy and be diligent and move your feet and move. God used an ant. Don't be like he says, slugger. He's telling you not to be a slugger. A slugger is a spirit. It's a spirit of slowfulness. It's a spirit of procrastination. This is what's going to bring poverty. He said he used one ant, something that you look over, something that you walk over, something that you can't see. He said, be diligent like the ant. The ant prepares for the season that is to come. How many people in the body of Christ is preparing for the season that is to come? How the enemy brings us into poverty because we waste time and can't get it back. So poverty comes. He said, Isaac, stay in this land because there's something on your life that I want to reveal. I don't care about famines. I care about discipline. I've given you the anointing of old. I'm restoring what I gave Adam. Sold the seed. He sold that seed. And he had women, men, women, he had oxen, he had cattle, he had sheep. And the Bible said when he planted, he had a hundredfold. And God blessed him because he obeyed him. So poverty couldn't come. Listen, watch this. He was producing for people that didn't even like him. They weren't even connected with the Philistines. The Philistines' land were the one that was in famine. He had him to plant in his enemy's yard so that he can produce. And then after he produced, they kicked him out because he had the seed. Hear what I'm trying to tell you today. Don't be deterred by your country or by your community. What God desires to do for you is not give you a seed, but to use you as one. You're the seed I need. Because the same grace. I gave Adam to be fruitful and multiply and replenish and subdue. What do you have to subdue? The spirit of poverty. Genesis chapter 41. God will use a man by the name of Joseph. Pharaoh had a dream and he would tell Pharaoh. He said, listen, there's a dream. And Joseph interpreted there was fat calves, seven years of fat calves, seven fat calves. And then there was seven. They both came from the water. I'm going to talk about the marine kingdom. 
how does calves come out of the water? They drink water, but how do they come out? Another day. The Bible said, he said, these are seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And God is trying to position the body of Christ. Position the body of Christ before the seven years of famine come. Before this country goes bankrupt. Before this country goes into another recession. He's trying to position, watch this, our Joseph. The body of Christ had become Joseph. Do you know what the name Joseph mean? It means God will add. So it didn't matter if there was a famine. Because of the grace that was on his life, he knew that God will add. I almost wanted to say that the body of Christ better be ready for when they release gases. I'm going to say this and I want you to hear this. For people who do not conform to their statutes, their laws, and their decrees that they're getting ready to make, if you don't conform and you're a farmer, they're going to do something to your cattle to kill them. Your sheep, your pigs, your pork chops won't be because they're trying to bring people under the same uniformity, and that's the mark. I told you, when they bring the economy down, people compromise. What does it profit the man to gain the whole world, and yet he loses his soul? And people are getting ready to lose their soul because they can't eat. Take the mark. And most people, their appetite is going to make their decision for them. Because poverty will always have you to compromise. That was a reason that Joseph's brothers came to Egypt. It was hunger. They didn't have any food. Poverty brought them. And they were willing to give up their brother to get food. Hear me, body of Christ. Please get yourself in order. Start paying attention how the enemy... And I know you're thinking war, but the enemy has the underlining fact behind the war is poverty. Watch this. Hear what I'm saying. So what we're doing to Russia is suppressing them and bringing an entire country to poverty. That what a man sowed, that shall also reap. Yes, we're trying to stop them from taking Ukraine. Yay, we're assisted in helping Ukraine. But you're sowing seeds of poverty. So you're making innocent people pay for one man's mistake. See, when you look at it, you look at it from a different perspective. So the innocent, even Christians, are suffering now. And we don't see it. Our eyes are not open to it. So judgment will come if Christians are not in place. See, this is the reason why God said in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I forgive their sins and heal their land. How did God bring Egypt under subjection? He sent the locusts. <laughs> he sent the locusts. And his own people told him, Man, how long are you going to keep these people seeing our country is going down in ruins? Our country is going into poverty. How long are you going to keep it? See, I use verse 14 because we missed verse 13. Verse 13 said, if I shed up heaven that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to the vow of the land, and I send pestilence among my people, God is saying, if your butt ain't in position, you're not humble. You're not praying. The only way will be healed, and there won't be poverty unless the Christians start praying. So he does not leave the responsibility on him. He leaves it to you. I know we say God is in control. 
We say that all the time. God is in control. There's nothing that he can do. His hand is not slack according to his promises. And that's true. But in order for God to bring the children of Israel out of poverty, see, that's where welfare started. Welfare was only supposed to be the diving board to get you in the pool. But some people just like jumping on the diving board. They don't want to get in the pool. Because some people are afraid to swim on their own. Because swimming causes you to do the work. Diving, jumping on the diving board, you just jump. So people are just jumping. They're jumping in church. They're shouting, but they don't want to do any of the work. They don't want to get in the pool because getting in the pool is going to require work. So they've established welfare in Egypt. You can work and we'll feed you. But just stay in the community. So we stay for a check. Not understanding that it's poverty. And then we get so creative in poverty. Let me show you my stamps. You didn't save. Watch this. Watch, watch how poverty works. Because you just saved. You saved money that you sold from your stamp to buy rims. <laughs> so they're now they're calling you FSA. F F S L. Food stamp lady. <laughs> not saying there's nothing wrong with food stamps. <laughs> Not saying there's nothing wrong with food stamps. Listen, I grew up on that side. I grew up in Chicago. I grew up in Houston. I grew up in South Park. I grew up in Ailey. I grew up in various parts. Sunnyside. I grew up so I understand. But God never intended for me to stay there. When you ask a person where they're from, they shouldn't be where they're from. They should be somewhere else. I'm from Chicago. You from Chicago or you here in Houston? Okay, you're no longer in Chicago. You're in a different place. So God is trying to tell you that you should be in a different place. Your mindset should be in a place. Stop coming to church and jumping on the diving board but not getting in the pool. When the Bible says, it talks about the poor. It said, lend to the poor. But it's like you're lending to God. But how did the poor become the poor? The rich deceived the poor. But the poor was only deceived through the mindset. Poverty is a mindset. It's a stronghold. It keeps people from progressing. And you'll get comfortable. They were comfortable in Goshen. Even when they came out of Egypt, they told Moses, didn't we tell you to leave us back there? That now at least we could have had leaves and onions. We could have had that. But now where we are, we're not going to get anything. We prefer to go back to welfare. You brought us out here to die, but you was dying in. You were dying to come out, but crying to go back in. And poverty has ruled your life long enough. It has ruled, it has been systematic that every time it looks like you get a step ahead, poverty comes back. And maybe I'll do part two or something and tell you the real, the, the secret meanings behind it, that you can have certain garments on your life. See, procrastination causes poverty. You miss a season. I think that's the issue that we have, that when God do makes a statement, and we we'll await, we miss seasons. There's a time and a season for every purpose that's in the heaven. So you missed your purpose. I said this Friday. I said there were, there were 10 days. They were waiting for the husband man to come, Christ. And the Bible said five ran out of oil, didn't have light. But the problem, they were all virgins. They were pure. They had the equipment but didn't have the oil. And for some reason, we think we try to use this motor, this vehicle of the church, but we don't have oil. 
And the Bible said when the husbandman came, he left them in the dark. He closed the door on them. This is your season to move past the spirit of poverty generationally and the mistakely. Everything. Okay. How do you think people get AIDS? Well, now your cells fight against one another. You think that's naturally or spiritually? If the cells are supposed to reproduce, that's what our bodies do. Our bodies generate our own healing. So what attacks the cells in a body to where the cells fight one another to where you can't survive? You see how Satan uses certain things. Intimacy. It ain't intimacy. It's sex. He uses sex as a mold to tear down and destroy your body. God is trying to do something. Maybe we'll do part two next, next Sunday. Part two next Sunday on poverty. Part two. We'll do part two. But God is trying to take us out of that place of poverty. I told you Jesus took the curse so that you wouldn't have to take it anymore. The thorns, the crowns of thorns. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back just a little bit. I'm going to go back to Genesis chapter 21 or Genesis chapter 22. Abram, God commanded that he take his son. I'm going to show you how thorns played a part in everything from the curse to the blessing. Okay? So thorns represented the curse. Right? Because that's what he told Adam, poverty. So when it came down to Abraham, when he placed his son upon the altar, the Bible said that the ram was caught into the thickets. Watch this. So before the thorns would hurt, but now God is assigning the thorns to help. When it came to Paul, he said, because of the abundance of the revelation that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, and he found grace because of that thorn. Because the body wasn't cursed, the body was blessed. He said that the power of Christ may now rest upon me. Christ was resting upon him with the thorn. And today I believe that God is reversing the curses of poverty. There are certain garments that can be placed on an individual's life. When blind Bartimaeus was begging, thou son of David, have mercy. They say, shut up. Be quiet. He's coming. And the Bible said he finally got God's attention. Let me tell you something. Please hear me. If you want to stop begging, get God's attention. Hear this. Watch this. Please hear this. Please. I'm going to say two things. I'm going to close it. Then we'll get to part two probably next Sunday or something like that to talk about poverty. <laughs> the Bible said blind Bartimaeus cries out he captivates Jesus' attention he wants his sight he desires his sight back but he didn't have sight in those days you had to have garments to beg you had to wear your garment became your license it was your license to beg like some communities, they don't allow panhandling. They'll give you a ticket, throw you in jail if they catch you panhandling. He had a license to beg because he didn't have a sight. And the Bible says once Jesus gave him back his sight, watch this, he left his garment to beg. So that if they are natural garments, they are spiritual garments. Because some garments are mantles. Elijah carried a mantle that he gave to Elisha. He carried a mantle. There are some things that the enemy can place on your life to destroy your life, to take your life. There are garments that can be released spiritually that you may not even be aware of. The Bible said the second he received his sight, he no longer had to beg. He dropped his garment. So anybody who's been covered in spiritual garments in this place, we command that those spiritual garments, this day be consumed by the fire of God. No longer will you beg. Watch this. Last thing, last statement I'm going to make. There was a man who was paralyzed. That when it came to Peter, James, and John, when it came to the apostles, the Bible said that people had to pick him up because he was paralyzed to sit him at the gates of beautiful in the book of Acts. The Bible said that he sat there every day begging for alms. 
the Bible said Peter came to him and he was asking for him to say silver and gold have I none but such as I have he said in the name of Jesus he told him to rise and the legs responded what handicapped him Lord him whoo what handicapped oh I got two now what handicapped him he says, such as I have in the name. So today we're using the name of Jesus to remove every spirit of spiritual paralysis that's causing you to be paralyzed, that's causing you to hunger, that's causing you to suffer. He says, such as I have in the name. So in the name of Jesus, I send paralysis. I command spirits to be paralyzed that have caused you to be stuck in the same place. Could it be that you're asking for the wrong thing? You're asking for money? When you should be asking for the name that is above all names? When they remove the paralysis, he was being paralyzed. The man jumped up and started rejoicing. See, if you truly believe that the spirit of poverty was gone, you rejoice. Let me tell you how God has made this easy. He's made this so easy for you just to believe. See, we in church have told you, you got to do a trick. You got to come in so money. You got to come and be a part of my men's ministry. You got to join my church in order for me to pray for you. You got to do this and do that. You, you got all of these rules and regulations. It sounds like religion to me. But when they came to the gates, there was no church because they were the church. Hey, woo. And we stopped trying to bring people in our church and become the church manifestation of heaven and people will start coming out of poverty because sin is poverty. It keeps you stuck in that same place. It keeps you in darkness but when you come into the marvelous light, then now you can produce light. Now you can show light. Yeah. Last thing I'm going to say. I'm done. The Bible said there was one person that was connected to Saul but it was Jonathan's son. The Bible said that he was stuck in poverty. He was stuck in Lodabar. And the Bible said he was handicapped. See, God gave me another way of looking at handicap. He did. He gave me another way to look at handicapped people. And some of how did he become handicapped? The Bible said that when they invaded Saul's temple, his nurse picked him up, but in the route of him leaving, she dropped him. That's what caused his feet to be paralyzed to where he couldn't move. He was dropped. And some of us may feel the same way. You feel like you was dropped. You was dropped by somebody you trusted. And there's a spiritual debt, spiritual poverty. Because you were dropped. So now you don't forgive people. It's poverty. The Bible said, according to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14, if you forgive men of their trespasses, then the Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men, then you will not be forgiven. So the enemy will use spiritual poverty. Unforgiveness will bring you into a place of spiritual poverty. Watch this. The Bible said that he's in Lodabar, and now David becomes king. Because sometimes it takes that kind of anointing to bring you out. He's handicapped, but God showed me this many years ago about handicapped people. So if you feel like you're handicapped today and you're stuck today, do you know that when you go to a restaurant or when you go to a mall, the first parking spaces are reserved for handicapped people. Handicapped people even have their own door that they go in. They got a button that they push that simplifies the sign that this is for a handicapped person. So listen to me. So today, if you feel like you've been handicapped because of poverty, God is trying to teach you that I'm getting ready to put you out front. I'm getting ready to open doors for you. I'm getting ready to do something new for you. Watch this, please. This. Because when it came down to Miss Fibbleship, David said, is there anybody left in Saul's house? He said, yes, there's one. He's in Lodabar. David said, go and get Lodabar. Because when you're in poverty, when you think about poverty, the only thing you think about, you down your own self. 
You curse your own self because that's all you're doing. You start telling yourself how bad you are, how this and how that. You curse the day you was born just like Job did. And all this stuff because you're going through these calamities. And the Bible said, uh, um, Miss Fibbleship said, why does the king want such a dead dog as I? He didn't even think nothing about himself because he was in that environment. Mindset. And the Bible said he was handicapped. But because of the king's request, God had somebody to pick him back up. And told him, you're getting ready to come and sit at the king's table. Watch this. You're sitting at the king's table, and the king's table, won't nobody even see your handicap. So what God is trying to get you to do because of see your handicap. People won't even see because God specializes in making dysfunctional things function. Yeah. And from that moment on, Miss Fibble Chef ate the king's portion. And today God is trying to get you to eat the king's portion. He's calling you out of Lodabar. The spirit of poverty today is over.